Hi. Good morning. Good How morning. Are you How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Such an important topic right now. I know. Oh my God. And it's so funny because like literally last night we're doing some transitions with Kavya. And so we were like, okay, let's drop her dream feed. And of course that was when she was up like three times last night. And I was like, you would you would do this ironic thing right before I have to talk about sleep. <laughs> Very true to form for her, but I am excited so to talk to you. Me too. Let's get you a nap today. Let's yeah. get you like two minute sleep latency tonight where you just drop right in. Yes. Three hours of deep sleep. Yes, please tell me. Tell me more about what I need to do for sleep. Oh my God, I'm going to tell you so many things. So guys, first of all, hi, nice to meet everybody. If you don't know me, um, I'm Dr. Kate Henry. I'm a naturopathic doctor. Dr. Bala and I went to school together. And um, I mostly help people with nutrition and mental health in my practice where I do naturopathic medicine and functional medicine within a new practice called Scenario Functional Medicine, which we can talk about at the end. Um, and then Dr. Bala, do you want to introduce yourself for the people who might be watching from my side? Yes, absolutely. So I am Dr. Bala, and like Kate said, we went to school together. Um, I specialize more in women's health, hormonal health, um, anything to do with your periods. That's, that's kind of what I like to help with. And of course, sleep plays a huge role in that. So I am definitely excited to chat with you about sleep. Let's go. So... I have like 50 slides of this online because we just did a presentation for this as part of our nutrition for wellness series at Sonare. So like, love it. it's so great because every, you know, this, every time you do a presentation, it gives you a chance to like go back in the research mm -hmm. and find new stuff. So I was kind of shocked every time I go back and I query sleep and nutrients, there's new research all the time. And so I, I want to start with the fact a couple terms before we begin. Okay. So there's a couple different problems we can have with sleep, right? Falling asleep, which is called sleep latency, mm -hmm. staying asleep. And part of that is interruptions in sleep. And then the third is sleep duration. So maybe like you fall asleep. Okay. But no matter what, after five hours, you're up and you cannot get back. And if you're a new mom or you're someone who's like aging and you're like, oh, this is just normal. I guess I'm like up at 4 a.m. No matter what time I go to bed now. And this is my life. Mm -hmm. Please listen. No, yes. this doesn't have to be your story. Absolutely. So I want to start with one fun fact and, and then I'll kind of give an overview as we go through. But did you guys know, like by show of hands, you can comment in the chat. How many of you knew that being deficient in vitamin D can increase the amount of time it takes you to fall asleep? Okay, so I, I, didn't, know. I didn't know about the latency part. That's so interesting. Right, and this is new research. So this is why it's so cool um, to continue to research this and why you guys like want to stay up to date with this. So especially because it's winter, we're talking about vitamin D levels below 75 can impact your ability to fall asleep. So guys, your sleep latency, if you're super tired, should be like less than 15 minutes, right? So if you're laying there and it's taking you 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour or more to fall asleep, I want to invite you check your vitamin D levels, right? Yep. So Dr. Bala, you talk about this all the time. So can you tell people a little bit of the difference between like what they might hear at a, at a primary care checkup about their vitamin D versus. Yeah. And I think like, even if you look at your own labs, like if you get your vitamin D labs done and you look at those and you see like, Oh, I'm, I'm fine because it's above 30, but so much of the research for immune function and now sleep and hormonal function, especially if you have PCOS, like there's so much research showing that it's usually above 60 that we want to yes. see your vitamin D levels. And then for specifically sleep, they're, they're clearly finding research above 75. Um, and for like viral illnesses, um, I've seen it Hi. above 50. So, so yeah, so 30 is, you know, it's, it's adequate for like preventing really big stuff, but mm -hmm. you know, when we, when we want to really make sure that we have quote unquote optimal levels, we want that at mm -hmm. least above 50, ideally like 70 to 80. Love it. And so guys, am I, is my audio bad? No, I can hear you fine. Cool. I don't know how everyone else feels, but. <laughs> okay. Oh, thanks guys. So um, I want you to keep in mind the interventions that we're talking about today are non-pharmaceutical, non-drowsy. They're vitamins and minerals that you can get through food. So they're safe, right? So, so much of the time when we go to the doctor for sleep and we're prescribed a pharmaceutical, those can be life-saving, right? If you are like day three of no sleep, you need something to just knock you out, great. But what we're talking about today is safe interventions 
that are going to help your body naturally sleep enough without side effects. So, and actually with side benefits, right? Because when you take, when you're vitamin D deficient and you correct that, like Dr. Bala said, you're moving your immune system go up. But I want to tune in if you're someone who's like, well, I go out in the sun once a week and I'm probably fine. <laughs> the top sources of vitamin D in the diet are cod liver oil, trout, salmon, mushrooms that have been exposed to UV light, and milk that's fortified. And so if you guys haven't eaten those every day for the past couple months, you're someone who might benefit from checking your levels and then supplementing, right? And what you may find is that as your levels go up, you naturally fall asleep faster. So let's talk, that's kind of number one is vitamin D. Dr. Bala, I'm gonna move on to the minerals if you, unless you have more comments. No, go for it, go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there's a couple minerals that matter for sleep. And a lot of this data, y'all, is taken from the NHANE study, um, which like, has anyone heard of this? Besides me and Dr. Bala? Mm, I don't know. Not, See, I'm not, seeing, I, I'm not seeing that people are, so yeah, go for it. <laughs> So if you're an American, your tax dollars pay for the government to study human nutrition in our country. Every 10 years or so, the NIH, the USDA, the FDA all team up and this, with the CDC, and they take blood and urine from people in our population, and they figure out what are Americans deficient in, right? And then they use that data to figure out and what nutrient deficiencies are linked to diseases. And this is where we get our food fortification from. So have you ever picked up a box of Honey Nut Cheerios and it's like, all these B vitamins are in there, right? Yeah. And some iron. This is why, because the government understands human health and knows, okay, if we fortify foods that people tend to eat with hard to get nutrients, the health of our population may improve. So this is where a lot of this data comes is this NHANE study. Um, what they found is that with short sleep, Right, so like go to bed, no matter what, you're up five to seven hours later, you can't get back. There are a couple of nutrient deficiencies that increase your risk for that. Iron deficiency, zinc deficiency, magnesium deficiency, calcium deficiency, folate deficiency. And then inadequate intake of proteins and carbs. So I'm gonna go through each of these, but how many of you have ever talked to your doctor about like iron for sleep? Or zinc exactly. for sleep. Absolutely. I don't think anyone's really talking about nutrients for sleep ever. So this is great. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the key point, guys. So iron deficiencies associated with um, short sleep latencies, but inadequate intake of iron alone will actually increase your risk. So let's talk about you, Dr. Bala. We'll just use you as an example if you're okay with it. Um, so like, it's so easy for a doctor to check your iron levels, right? And maybe they're normal. And they'll just be like, oh, you're a new mom. Like, you know, push through. It'll be okay. And no one looks at your diet. Mm -hmm. What we might miss is that maybe in the process of the last three to six months, your iron intake has dropped to 70 or 80% of optimal. And that alone will decrease the amount of time that you're able to sleep. So it's also inadequate intake that will increase your risk of poor sleep. So Dr. Bala, do you have thoughts about this before I go into top sources of iron? No, I think it's great that you are talking about all the nutrients that we need. Cause I feel like so many times people are like, give me a supplement. Like, what can I take? How about melatonin? And it's not just about the falling asleep. It's also about staying asleep. And there's so many things that we can do to support it. So I'm glad you're, you're talking about that avenue. So. Oh my God. Also, we're going to talk about how to make melatonin. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned. Um, top food sources of iron are oysters, white beans, beef liver, lentils, baking chocolate, and then fortified breakfast cereals. Yes. Love it. Top five. I don't feel and like most people are getting those foods on a regular basis. I can definitely say I'm not. <laughs> right? And the, this is why it pays to check. And guys, if you're wondering, oh, shoot, I don't need these nutrients. How do I know if I'm getting enough? You can track. So a tracker like Chronometer or MyFitnessPal mm -hmm. will break down micronutrients for you. So just do a one-week audit and see. Or you can pay someone like me or Dr. Bala to tell you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and do an in-depth nutrient analysis and figure it out. Um, but what I'll say is if you're someone who's craving breakfast cereal, right, you're like, all I want to eat is like 
Honey Nut Cheerios or, or like frosted mini wheats. Mm -hmm. It may be that it's fortified with iron and what you're actually craving is the iron. Most of us, if you aren't a big fan of oysters or beef liver, um, you could try adding some white beans to like chili or spaghetti because white beans will absorb whatever you cook them in. Right. So anybody at home, you have you, you don't eat those foods regularly, but you're looking for more ways to include them. Put some lentils or white beans in what you're making anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then consider switching a pasta that you're using from a wheat based pasta to a lentil based pasta. Yep, that's Your iron intake will go up. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you may sleep longer. This sounds simple, but it's profound. And it's your birthright to know how to use food instead of feeling you've got to go buy a supplement because like how many people here have taken an iron supplement and it gives you gut issues and then you're like, well, that's not going to work. Exactly. I can't tell you how many of my patients are like, please don't put me on an iron supplement. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, this is why lentils and white beans are such a cool source of iron because they come with fiber. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to stop you up and they're not going to upset your gut. In fact, they might have the opposite effect. So this is why using food as an iron source of nutrient is awesome. better. Those foods also have a little bit more protein. So I know I talk a lot about that with blood sugar and I'm sure we're getting there too. <laughs> yes. Well, we can jump there now if you want, and then we'll yeah. come back to zinc, calcium, magnesium, and folate. So why don't you do your protein spiel and then I'll add about sleep. So my protein spiel is mostly just in relation to blood sugar because a lot of the patients that I work with um, have PCOS, they have insulin resistance. And so when we talk about insulin resistance, we really want to talk about blood sugar regulation and the best way to really regulate that without having to be so restrictive and like, be like, I can't eat carbs. I can't have bread. I can't have anything I like. The best way that we can do that is by adding more protein. And so a lot of people struggle to get the amount of protein that is really needed to balance our blood sugar, especially in the morning. So many people aren't eating breakfast and mm -hmm. um, later in the day, we tend to eat, you know, more carb heavy foods too. And so those two times of the day, if we can increase our protein can be really helpful for, um, I'm sure sleep as we'll talk about too. And then also for regulating your blood sugar. So my biggest thing is get protein wherever you can. If you need to supplement it with protein powders, I mean, that's mm -hmm. fine too. But if we can get them from whole foods, that's always what we prefer. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so adding lentils, adding beans to like whatever you're already eating is, is a great way of just increasing that amount of protein that you're already struggling to get. Genius. And track, guys. If you don't check, you don't know. And if tracking is triggering for you, your practitioner can track for you. So I use an app called Chronometer in my practice. My practice pays for it for my clients and they can share what they're eating with me and I track on my end. And I can pull a nutrient report after a couple of weeks and see, all right, how you doing with your protein? How you doing with your iron? What am I going to suggest to gently help you move to where you need to be? And that can be a little bit less stressful of a way of going about this if you're already overwhelmed and being like, hold on, there's six different nutrients that I feel like I now have to worry about. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Just eat. We'll track it. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to design you a plan. I do meal planning in my practice where I just do this for you, right? This is the benefit. But um, let's talk about protein for a second. So if you just get enough protein in the day for you, and your needs are going to change depending on your height, weight, age, gender, um, activity level. But in general, and so Dr. Ball and I can help you find that level for you. But if you just get enough protein in a day, you are twice as likely to get enough of a sleep duration as someone who doesn't. And so what that translates to, if you're like, okay, that doesn't really mean much to me. Think about all the nights that you only sleep six hours, right? Cut those in half, right? So now instead of four days a week, you're sleeping six hours and like, you know, you get kind of catch, you catch up on the weekends. Now you can double that. So now it's four to five days a week, you're sleeping eight hours or more and only two days a week, you're sleeping six hours. The impact of that can't be overstated. While this sounds like minor shifts over time, this is going to help you like maintain higher brain volume. You're going to be happier, healthier. Your memory will be good. Like you'll be less testy with your family members. Like <laughs> that's important. <laughs> and it's literally just like from eating protein, which Dr. Ball is already talking to you about for your hormones. Anyway, um, so I have my clients cheat sometimes. I'll admit, um, and the rule in my practice is. First, you worry about eating enough, and then you worry about eating the right things. Exactly. I right? Because it's like, if we can get you eating enough protein, then 
you start making neurotransmitters. Then you start sleeping. Then you build muscle and your insulin resistance improves. And then you feel so much better that you can actually worry about cooking mm -hmm. and meal planning, right? So it's first things first, get enough. So I don't care if you got to add collagen to your coffee. Yep. You got to chug a protein shake, eat protein bars. Exactly. Whatever you can do at first, let your brain start to get enough of that protein in your body. And then in three months, we're going to worry about like, okay, how do you be like all organic, all home cooked, whatever, <laughs> right. you wanna, whatever your right. goals are. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sustainable. Um, so the other thing guys is if you're someone who's sitting at home and you're like, God, every time I eat protein, I have problems. Like I either can't digest it. If I eat meat, it just kind of sits and I feel gross. Or like if I try a pea protein, it makes me bloated. Usually that's an issue with your gut that Dr. Ball and I can help you work up. So don't give up and don't just be like proteins doesn't work for me. Cause like, that's just, if you're a human protein has to work for you. <laughs> like it's part of your biochemistry. Um, and this is why it pays to do a little bit deeper of a dive if you feel like you have barriers to accomplishing this goal and we can help you. Um, this is what we do every day. So we're talking about protein and I don't want to lose sight of the fact that carbohydrates are also important, especially fiber. And, and Dr. Bala talks about fiber all the time because it's so important for estrogen metabolism. It is. Um, but you need carbohydrates to allow tryptophan to cross your blood brain barrier and make serotonin. If I had to ask you, what nutrient you make melatonin from? How many of you know? There's a couple people in the chat. Anybody want to type it in? Some people guess like vitamin D. Some people think it's a B vitamin. So you make melatonin from serotonin, which is made from the amino acid tryptophan and B vitamins, B12, B9, and B6. And that's it. So if you get enough protein and B vitamins, you can make enough melatonin. The reverse is also true. You can't make enough melatonin if you don't eat enough protein and B vitamins. And if you don't allow your, light, your eyes to be exposed to darkness so that you can turn on the enzymes in your brain that actually convert serotonin to melatonin. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe you're sitting at home being like, well, that's weird because like, I, I don't have enough serotonin. Like my doctor put me on an SSRI or like I'm taking Zoloft because they told me I don't have enough serotonin and that's why I have depression. Okay, well, are we surprised you can't sleep? That is such a good point. Thank you. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> Feel free to interrupt me if you're like, oh, I have things about melatonin. I love, I love it. You're, you're in the flow. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. So guys, we want to get you serotonin replete before we even worry about like, do you have enough melatonin or not? Since you only make an, as much melatonin as you have serotonin. So this is where the, the series I did will show you like literal videos and it'll show you the biochemical reactions, which is nice if you're a visual learner. But if you're an auditory learner, you can just listen to me. We have chemical reactions in our body that keep us alive, right? And those are all run by nutrients. That's why human nutrition is so important because our biochemistry is only run using about 80 to 100 different nutrients. If you master those, you've mastered human health, nutrition, and biochemistry, period. And so when you get enough tryptophan, which is an amino acid derived from protein, and you can combine that with B vitamins, what you end up with is enough serotonin. And so what I often see in my practice is people come in and they're like, Hey, I'm depressed and I'm anxious and I'm irritable. I don't have enough serotonin. And then we look at their diet and they're getting 30% of the tryptophan they need 20% of the B12, 20% of the folate. And I'm like, well, I would imagine you're about 20% as happy as you could be because you're only making 20% of the serotonin you could be. Exactly. <laughs> This is also why you can't fall asleep. So what do you, well, I'm going to like kind of go through the top sources of these foods. Um, but in the meantime, Dr. Bala, do you want to talk about melatonin a little bit and its impact on, on women's health? Absolutely. Yeah. So women's or sorry. So melatonin can be really helpful for fertility measures too. So not only is it important for sleep, but in higher doses, we see it really beneficial for um, for fertility, for your hormones, for ovulation. So it's really important that your melatonin levels naturally are um, are doing well because we really mm -hmm. want to support all of your hormones. We want to support ovulation. We want to support that HPA axis. There's so many benefits to your endogenous melatonin, the melatonin you're making versus supplementing. We can always supplement any nutrient, of course, but when you make it yourself, like, like Dr. Kate's saying, there's so many other benefits to it, especially for sleep, for mood, for um, for hormones, for ovulation, for fertility, and, and even for um, antiviral effects, for, for so many things. Your, your whole body runs on 
on all of these things. And melatonin is one of those things that are really important. Yes, like major antioxidant, right? Um, let's, let's actually talk about this for a bit. And this is like not scripted. So you're going to see that maybe Dr. Ma and I have different opinions right now, which is good. I can't tell you how many people I've seen recently coming into the clinic who are taking like 20 or 30 milligrams of melatonin in there. No, 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 no. Hi, cuties at home. Stop doing that. (laughs) Maximum three milligrams. Okay. If that's not working for you, there's another problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're, it's not melatonin at that point. Exactly. When you're taking the, that high of a dose of melatonin, it can depress you. It can make you very fatigued during the day. So while melatonin is great, beautiful, awesome, amazing neurohormone, you don't want too much of it because it is so powerful. Instead, I'd rather you get enough of the precursors you need to make it and then let your, let your eyes see darkness for about 30 minutes before bed. So shut off your blue lights, shut off your overhead light. Put on your blue light block on Instagram while you're scrolling, if you must, <laughs> or wear your blue light glasses. Like, I understand we all like to do it, it. but like, give your body a fighting chance, guys, you know, and like, don't overdo it. So if you want to know, okay, Kate, how do I get enough serotonin? Okay. Remember the ingredients, tryptophan, B12, B9, B6. So um, B9 comes from beef liver, from spinach, from black eyed peas, from fortified cereals and rice. And a, like, it, as we go down the list, it also comes from some vegetables like asparagus and Brussels sprouts. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you really quick. Um, Cause I was talking about this with a couple of other moms. And so while I was pregnant, I craved cereal so much. And this was kind of going back on when you were like, Oh, if you're craving cereal all the time. And you know, when you're pregnant, you, all of your nutrient sources are being used up by baby, by growing baby. And this mm-hmm. isn't the first time I've heard it. Like almost every pregnant woman I've talked to, they were like, I crave so much cereal. And that's, exactly why. <laughs> my guess is that you weren't craving like the unenriched bland rice cereal you, know, you were craving like <laughs> the kid cereal yeah, that exactly. our government fortifies with nutrients so that's the thing and this is where when we have this like all foods are okay and this very science-based approach to nutrition there are people who come in who are like i'm not eating any processed foods and i'm like oh i already know you're nutrient deficient the reason that it's good to eat processed foods, if unless you are a nutritionist and you're really tracking your food, is that you get all of these extra vitamins and minerals from them. So some of the sickest people I see are the people with these very rigid food rules who are like, well, sure, I'm craving cereal, but I'm not going to eat it. And I'm like, your body is sending you signals <laughs> <laughs> that you need iron and you've just been like ignoring it because you have this hang up about not wanting to eat processed food. And it's like, this is wh- why you need to do a nutrient analysis and look guys, so that you're not sort of like avoiding the things that maybe your body might be telling you you need for a reason. So yes, like eat the fortified cereal as long as it's good for you as part of an intelligent plan for getting you enough of these nutrients. Okay. I'm going to speed through. Yes. Bottom line, the tryptophan, if you get enough total protein, you will get enough tryptophan period because it's an amino acid and amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So again, proteins, powders, shakes, protein bars, really delicious like chilies and lentil soups like whatever you got to do um and then track to make sure you're hitting those goals b12 if you have gut issues it's actually unlikely that you're absorbing a lot of b12 um because you need intrinsic factor from your stomach and that can it's a very complicated process to absorb b12 we actually end up absorbing it like right above our right hip that's how far down in the digestive tract so like a lot of things have to go right up until then. And so if you're someone who's like getting B12 shots, right. Um, or something, we need to clean up your gut and improve your gut health so that you can absorb B12. All right. We're going to move on unless you have some other things to say about this, Dr. Bala. Just really quick with the protein. If you are supplementing protein and you're doing collagen, collagen isn't a complete protein. So like Dr. Mm-hmm. Kate mentioned with all of the amino acids that are needed, you're not getting all the amino acids if you're only using collagen. I know collagen tastes better because it's flavorless and it doesn't have that gritty, especially if you're doing plant-based proteins. But if you're going to supplement with collagen, also make sure you're getting protein from other sources too, because you're not getting all of the amino acids. Genius. This is why you go see Dr. Bala, folks. Um, Let's just put a plug for hydration. Hydration will improve your sleep amount by 5%. Sounds small. Is significant. If you're like, God, I lay in bed and I, I wake up and every day it's my tracker says seven hours and 49 minutes. Like, what the heck? Try drinking more water. (laughs) Okay. So if you want to cut your sleep issues in half, get enough zinc. 
So adequate zinc in your diet has a risk reduction ratio for short sleep of 53%. And what that translates to is if you're laying in bed, again, six hours of sleep is your norm. We can get you a, like 50% improvement on that <laughs> with zinc. So can anybody guess in the chat top sources of zinc in the diet? I'm not going to make you guess like for real that long. So oysters, number one source. Um, when's last time any of you ate oysters? Okay, I not think I've never eaten it, so. <laughs> right. I think mine was like two years ago, you know. Um, and then it's beef chuck, crab, beef patty, lobster, pork chop. So right away, if you're vegan or vegetarian, you're like, oh, dear. <laughs> Right. Um, and then under that is like baked beans and breakfast cereal, pumpkin seeds and yogurt. But those are those only give you about 15 to 25 percent RDI per serving, which means you'd have to eat a lot of them every day just to get enough. So this is where and Dr. Bala probably feels the same way. Often when people come in, I'll build them a meal plan that gets them all of these, but then we use nutritional insurance. So we'll use like a pharmaceutical grade multivitamin that actually has all of these nutrients in adequate amounts in it. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. You do the same thing. Yes. Yes. I mean, sometimes a multivitamin is just needed prenatal for most of my patients, but yes, it's, it's helpful. One million percent. So my like elite folks in my practice who are like, I'm so over the basic nutrition. I've been doing this for three years. They literally, at the end of the day, look at all the nutrients on their tracker, and whatever they're low in is what they supplement, right? So most people, it's like calcium, potassium one day, vitamin D the next day. So you can literally use nutrition in this way where, like, you only supplement each day with what you need. Uh, but what I'll say is you can have an amazing diet, and it's so frustrating to watch, like, particularly your B vitamins and like your iron and calcium, just like stay under that 50% mark, like no matter what. And then you add a multivitamin and they, and they all get to 110%. And you're like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> this is why. But if you want to supplement zinc, which is like a pretty popular thing, um, especially trending right now because of its role in immunity and smell and taste. Um, my advice to you guys, and I know this is Dr. Ball's advice too, do not take it on an empty stomach. It will make you nauseous and probably vomit. Um, it's meant to be taken with food or right before bed. So what I have found is when you take it right before bed, right before you get nauseous, you usually get tired. <laughs> so it will actually kind of knock people out, which is really amazing. And then they wake up super refreshed. Um, I don't know if you've had that experience. No, I, it, but I definitely <laughs> have to try that. <laughs> Caveat is if you're supplementing with zinc, make sure it's either balanced with copper or that you're checking your zinc and copper once a year. If you take a lot of zinc and you aren't also aren't paying attention to your copper, your copper can go low because those minerals compete for absorption. What a copper anemia will look like is uh, pale skin, irritability, difficulty concentrating, and then hair issues. None of those are cute. Like you don't want those, right? So um, let's make sure that you're getting enough copper. And so you can buy a zinc copper supplement that's already combined. Ideal ratio is like one to 15. So one milligram of copper per 15 milligrams of zinc. Start low with zinc and ask a practitioner how much you should take. Don't jump online and buy a 50 milligram thing of zinc. That is too much. Yes. Oh my God. I can't say how many patients I, I get so many patients that are like, I'm taking zinc. I'm like, why? Who gave it to you? Why are you taking so much? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and you're like, if you're feeling irritable and you can't concentrate, like this could be why, you know, um, guys, also if you're, if you're, listening and you have a male partner who like listened to Joe Rogan and started taking zinc for testosterone <laughs> three years ago, please have them check their copper zinc. Okay. You can even order them a test online and then just give it to them. <laughs> okay. So I think I've probably overwhelmed everyone and I feel like possibly 10 okay, minutes ago we hit our We can go back and watch it slower. <laughs> So if you want to learn more or you want the visuals, guys, head over to my site um, and then or go to sonaritoday.com. Hold on one second. Sorry, there's feedback. Sonari is S-A-N-A-R-E today.com. And you can go to the Thrive University and click on classes. And that will show you. It's like a 40-minute talk, but there's slides, there's visuals. And then on my Instagram, I gave you a little printout of tests that you can ask your doctor for. 
to see if any of these are relevant for you. So just screenshot that fault, bring it to your doctor and be like, can you test me for these? I can't sleep. Exactly. <laughs> yes. It won't always work, but hopefully it might. <laughs> and if, if they won't run it, you can order your own labs. You can do Quest Direct. You can do directlabs.com. It'll be cash-based. It won't be through your insurance, but you can run these yourself. You don't have to wait for a clinician to order them for you. And then people like Dr. Bama and I will, will always do these labs for you if we can, if you come see us. It's just part of doing good medicine. Um, love it. So Dr. Bala, I talked so much. I'm so sorry. Do you have No, absolutely. I'm learning just as much. So I love it. I, I always love chatting with you and hearing what you have to say. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. I definitely want to do this again. So we'll, we'll maybe hopefully meet you back here so you can teach us more things. Anytime. I'll come back. Thanks right. for being here today, oh, guys. I did, I did, sorry, really quick. I mentioned to people that if they wanted questions, they could put them in the question box. But I don't see any, so we're good. All right. <laughs> All right. Perfect. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, Dr. Okay. Bye.